Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. If you are new to the channel, it is fair to let you know that around these parts, we like to talk about Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. And that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today because I have just received my copy of Blackstone Fortress Abominable Intellect, a small card expansion for the game that ups the difficulty. Now, I'm going to be upfront and say that unfortunately this video may come across as a little bit negative because there's a lot of things about this expansion that I'm not keen on. But I will try and be as upbeat and positive as I can be. Later on in the video, I am going to go through every card in the pack, but um, for people who don't want to have spoilers, I will let you know in advance before we get to that section. For now, first of all, what is Abominable Intellect and what is it trying to do? Basically, it's a way of making Blackstone Fortress more difficult, more challenging. There are quite a few people who say that once you get to grips with Blackstone Fortress, it is quite an easy game and you can have a bit of a cakewalk and your heroes become so powerful that you can breeze through the challenges. Personally, I've never got to the stage where I'm having an absolute cakewalk. I think a lot of the time it's quite a casual gaming experience, it's quite laid back, but then every now and again things will go against you and you start to get a little bit hosed and suddenly you get a tense moment, there's a, a flurry of activity and deadly dice rolls. Usually you can pull through, but yeah, so it's one of those things where a lot of the time it's quite a quite a laid back and an enjoyable experience that will suddenly have moments of tension. But there are a lot of people, as I say, who are finding the game very easy, and this card pack addresses it. What you get, you get 34 new encounter cards, and these encounter cards replace all of the encounter cards from the base game, and the encounter cards from the Dreaded Amble expansion, and the Traitor Command expansion. There are 34 encounter cards in total. If you don't have the expansions, you just don't use those particular encounter cards. And the idea is that you can use these cards to create two new levels of difficulty. First of all, you can do a challenging difficulty level where basically you just replace the encounter cards you would normally have on a mission with these encounter cards. And then you can go to abominable difficulty where in addition to using these cards, every time you have a combat, you actually draw one extra card because Every card has something on it called a twist, which is a special event which is in effect for that entire combat and makes things more difficult for you. And those are the uh, the things I'm going to go through later on in the video. Um, so yeah, the way that it's making things more difficult, one is, is this twist idea, these, these twists that have a permanent effect on the combat. The other way, unfortunately, that, the, that these cards are making the game more difficult is it is encouraging you to put more miniatures on the board. At the same time as these cards were released, they released two new miniatures packs. One pack has a set of miniatures that came with the base game, and then there was a second pack which had all of the miniatures from the Escalation expansion. And adding those miniatures to the game is the way that these cards are increasing the difficulty. What that means, in effect, is that every encounter card in this base game uh, has spawns that require more miniatures than you will have in your original purchases. In fairness, it does say in the rules for this expansion that you can use the cards without buying additional miniatures, but the intention is that you have additional miniatures to hand. If you don't have the additional miniatures, you either spawn as many of the miniatures as you can, or I guess you proxy them in. And this is my major concern with this particular expansion, is that adding extra enemies, adding new hostiles, more hostiles, isn't really a solution. This card pack is definitely a patch for a problem in the game, not a robust solution. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about this idea of spawning more enemies and why it is a problem in so many different ways for me personally. 
I'm going to show you one encounter card. This is um, an encounter card which exemplifies the problem. Um, so if you don't want to see any card at all, um, what I will do is I'll put a timestamp in the description of this video. You can cut to the end of the video just to get my final thoughts. But otherwise, for now, I'm just going to show you one encounter card. So here we have one of the encounter cards, and this was actually the encounter card at the top of the stack when I opened the pack. So it was the first card I was greeted with. And you can see that the first spawn point has 21 traitor guardsmen. Um, that is because in the base game, you get 14 traitor guardsmen. And in the new miniature pack that you can get, there is an additional seven guardsmen, making 21 total. So if you have your base game and that extra miniatures pack, you can spawn 21 traitor guardsmen on spawn point one for this particular combat. Now, this is a problem for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's a pretty lazy way, in my personal opinion, to add difficulty to the game. It's a way of going, oh, oh, yeah, just buy, buy some more miniatures. Yeah, buy, buy some extra miniatures. That, that'll make the game harder. Putting more miniatures onto the table isn't necessarily going to resolve any of the problems relating to difficulty. And in fact, in many ways, could make particular combats easier. Um, if you don't have the extra miniatures pack for a start, you can't spawn 21 Traitor Guardsmen, you can spawn 14. So your initial spawn isn't going to be maxed out, you'll only spawn 14, and that's how you can use these cards without buying the extra miniatures. But that's already creating a problem if your second encounter card you draw is another card that requires Traitor Guardsmen, because you've got no Traitor Guardsmen left, so your next spawn point will be empty. And then if you draw another card and it's asking for more Traitor Guardsmen, that spawn point will be empty as well. And you can say, ah, yeah, but rather than having the Traitor Guardsmen split over three spawn points, I've got them all on one. So it's no different. I've got the same number of Guardsmen kicking about. But that's not really the case. If you have all of your Guardsmen spawning on one spawn point, several issues arise. One, a Traitor Guardsman group can only have a single Sergeant. So, three groups of seven guardsmen would have three sergeants, one in each. A single group of 21 guardsmen has a single sergeant, which means you have two less stronger enemies on the board from the start. Additionally, a traitor guardsman group can only have a single flamer. So again, you're only having one flamer rather than a potential of three. You may also have noticed an additional problem there, if you are spawning 21 Traitor Guardsmen in a single group and you can only have one Sergeant and you can only have one Flamer, even having all of your miniatures from the base game plus all of your miniatures from a, the extra miniatures pack, you don't have enough Guardsmen for that group because you can't use two of the Flamers and you can't use two of the Sergeants, which means those miniatures will have to proxy in for alternative loadouts on the weapons. And that's not ideal. If you spend a lot of money on miniatures and then you still end up having to use them as proxies, I have a problem with that. But that's just the start of it. Next up, you have to consider your group now has 21 models in it and you have to roll individually for their behavior tests. So that's 21 rolls on this group alone. Imagine if the next group has 14 cultists in it, which is possible. And then the next group after that has six Urgles. I mean, how many rolls are you making per turn? That's a huge amount of additional bookkeeping being added to the game. Next, you have to consider what happens when you start killing enemies. When you kill enemies, they return to a pool based on the group they have come from. If you've got two or three groups of enemies, as you kill them, they go back to their respective groups. And in the reinforcement phase, you roll for each group. Three groups, three reinforcement rolls. If all of your enemies are going back into a single group, you are only making a single reinforcement roll for them. And furthermore, the numbers of the reinforcements doesn't change from the base game. So I think the maximum you can spawn of Guardsmen in a single reinforcement roll, if you're really unlucky, is six. So once you've started to thin out the ranks of these 21 Guardsmen that you've put on the board, the reinforcement rolls are never going to really fill them back up to capacity again, and you're reducing the number of opportunities you have to reinforce. So potentially, as the fights go on, they're going to get much easier. 
This is compounded by the fact that at the start of the battle, all of the enemies are going to be crowded around a single discovery token. So areas of the board are going to be empty. You may be able to walk straight through the board and out to a elevator and get off the board with no problem at all. They're all crowded together, so if you've got an area of effect weapon, you can potentially do a lot of damage. It's just a lot of issues for me that cramming more miniatures into fewer spawns, it's, it's not working for me at all. And of course, this is before we consider the fact that adding more hostiles isn't making your big enemies any tougher. Um, the dreaded Amble is still going to be a primary target. Um, Obsidious Malux, any sergeants or firebrands on the board, you're not getting a lot more of those things. So you're getting, yeah, you're getting more minions, you're getting more of the, the small enemies. But if you can get a head start on thinning those ranks, the reduced reinforcement rolls mean they're going to come back in fewer numbers. You can focus on the hero characters, which aren't getting any stronger based on numbers alone. So it's still not really achieving what it's setting out to do. I don't think this is the solution that we need. Fortunately, this expansion is doing more than encouraging you to have more miniatures on the board. In that, like I say, it is adding a twist on every encounter card. You will see that Discovery Token 4 is associated with a particular twist. And every single encounter card from this expansion has a twist on point 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly look through all of, of those twists. Um, I'm going to give my opinion on them. Um, we'll try and be as brief as we can, but if, again, you don't want spoilers, um, I'll direct you to the end of the video. Look for the timestamp in the description. So like I said, every encounter card has a twist on Discovery Point 4, which means any combat encounter that has four Discovery Tokens will always have one of these twists in play. And if you use Abominable Difficulty Level, you also, after setting up the combat, you draw another encounter card and you apply that twist as well. So you will have potentially two twists in play from these particular cards. And they do different things, but they create persistent effects. Very quickly, we have here Exhausted. In this combat, each player can only choose to keep a maximum of three activation dice after making an activation roll. Discard any other available action dice, activation dice. So it's reducing your number of actions in any given turn. Not my favorite mechanism because it is going to drag out combats. Um, you've got 21 traitor guardsmen on the board and you've only got three activations per turn. It's whatever. It's going to take longer to get through those ranks of enemies i don't think the game needed a way to make it longer it's it can be quite a long game if you get into situations where you're you're having to wear down enemies and not necessarily um delighted with a rule that's going to do that we have slow start explorers are no longer inspired flip their character card each explorer loses their inspiration points ouch um, that's particularly um, unpleasant for characters that start a mission inspired um, because they have a particular item. So that, that's that's quite funny. Um, Blase. When making an inspiration roll in this combat, that roll must be equal to or less than the highest wounds value of a single hostile slain by that explorer during the activation instead of the total combined wounds value. That's fine, it's just making it harder to get your inspiration points. Unprepared. In step two of each initiative phase, the hostile initiative cards are shuffled and set up first, then the explorer's initiative cards are shuffled and set up along the remaining spaces of the combat track. So basically, you're always on the back foot. Um, you're relying on your gambits and your covering fire to sort, sort that out and, and stay um, efficient. Out of time. To attempt a gambit in this combat, the player who controls the explorer must spend one activation dice with a value of four plus instead of an activation dice on their, instead of any activation dice on their character card. Okay, so it's just making it that you have to burn, burn higher value dice to get those benefits. Electrified Floor. In this combat, once the destiny roll has been resolved, if there is only one available destiny dice and the value of that dice is one, 
Each explorer suffers one wound. Um, that's a little bit convoluted and it's stuff like electrified floors is I've said in previous videos that one of the things that I would really like to see with this game is more uh, scenario driven combat encounters so combat encounters where you have things to do or where there's different effects in play environmental hazards and things like that something like an electrified floor I think would be good in one of those combat situations where it's an environmental hazard in play I'm not sure I'm overly fond of the idea of having it tied to the destiny dice like that it may not even come into effect and if it does just you know wiping wiping wounds off of characters isn't isn't particularly exciting note it doesn't take the wounds off of the bad guys um enhanced weapons each explorer has a defense d6 in this combat so it's just taking down your defenses that's fair enough that's that's something that's going to encourage more uh, clever maneuvering to avoid attacks sneak attacks in this combat after the destiny phase the leader must roll the blackstone dice on a 15 plus they pick one hostile that was slain during the combat and has not returned to the battlefield and then deploy them as close to an explorer as possible okay so it's just extra reinforcements coming into play soul graft each time a hostile is slain in this combat each other hostile heals one wound that is almost like a pointless thing. Um, you just concentrate your fire. It's one of the things you would do in this game anyway. When you've got big bads on the board, like the dreaded Amble and things like that, you tend to concentrate all your firepower into taking it down first anyway. So all you do with this is you target an, an enemy and keep attacking that enemy until they're dead then move on to the next enemy it's yeah that's weird i don't think that's going to achieve much of anything really it's certainly not going to change a, a valid tactic of pumping as much firepower into the big targets as possible enhanced weapons explorers do not receive the benefit of cover in this combat that's kind of just removing a strategic element from the battle I mean, you, making use of cover is one of the things that you have to think about. If cover doesn't matter anymore, are you just... Does it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Endless waves. In this combat, at the end of the destiny phase, return one slain hostile from each hostile group to the battlefield as reinforcements. Okay, so this is actually a twist that is negatively impacted by the situation I was talking about earlier. When you have all of your miniatures crammed into a single spawn group, uh, this Endless Waves is only, only going to spawn one hostile. If they're, if you've got multiple spawn groups, and of course I should reiterate, of course, that it isn't always going to be the case that if you spawn 21 traitor guards on spawn point one, then spawn two and three will also have traitor guards. You may get 21 Traitor Guards on the first space, and then Urgles, and then Spindle Drones. So it, this isn't always going to be a problem. But if you get several encounter cards, all of which are spawning the same type of enemy, and you run out of miniatures, you, you are creating a situation where you are negatively impacting something which is supposed to be making the game much tougher. Electrified Floor. Well, we've had that, so now we have it again. It's, it is exactly the same. There's one one dice and the value is one each explorer suffers a wound there's only 34 cards in this deck did it really need to have repeats uh, I do feel I'm being being very negative about this card back I do apologize um, rising frenzy add five to all hostile behavior rolls in this combat to a maximum of 20 um, I wonder if that stacks on top of other benefits from other um, things like the firebrand. I think it's the firebrand that boosts boosts the behavior rolls of cultists. I can't remember now. Um, I know some sometimes it's possible to get boosts. Hallucinogenic atmosphere. Each time a hostile is slain in this combat, roll the blackstone dice. On a 20, that model is not slain and all its wounds are healed instead. Oh, that could be annoying, couldn't it? If you've just killed a dreaded amble or something. That's, that's actually okay. Um... That's not so bad. That's 
yeah, you can it can that can upset the apple cart. It's only a one in twenty chance of it happening, but if you've got twenty one hostiles running around at the tabletop, it may trigger a few times. Fearsome reputation. In this combat, the cost of any action is increased by one for explorers who are adjacent to one or more hostiles to a maximum cost of six plus. That's sort of like a grappling type ability. For example, the cost of a four plus action will be increased to five plus. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's like being grappled by an opponent. That's okay. Yeah, that's something that's going to encourage um, a little more thought in where you're placing your character. Dying blows. Roll the Blackstone dice each time a hostile is slain in this combat. Before it is removed from the battlefield, if the result is 18 plus, one adjacent explorer suffers a wound. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it appears to be unblockable damage as well. It's just they just suffer a wound. That's going to be annoying for your close combat specialists. Eager for blood. In this combat, replace any hold results on behaviour tables with advance. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, get them all stuck in. Cause some trouble. Uneven footing. In this combat, explorers with agility uh, on the d12 have agility on the d8, and explorers with the agility on the d8 have agility on the d6. Yep, okay with that. Overconfident. If an explorer has no wounds or grievous wounds uh, on their character card, they must choose one of their activation dice after making an activation roll in this combat. Change the value of that activation dice to one. I'm assuming that you cannot pick a dice that is already a one because it says change it to a one. Missed opportunities. Inspiration points cannot be spent to reroll action dice in this combat. It's just taking away one of your resources for the combat. Maglev delays. Treat the summon four plus action as summon six plus in this combat. Mm, that's more annoying than anything else. I don't think, I don't think that's going to have a massive effect on on battles. It's, it's just going to be a little bit annoying. You're going to be stood next to next to doorways waiting to get the the d6 roll you need. Warp fueled burst. In this combat, roll twice on the behavior table for the first hostile to be activated each turn. Because yes, when you already have 40 enemies on the board rolling twice on the behavior table for one of them, yeah, why not? Add an extra behavior roll. Greed of Slanesh. In this combat, after the destiny roll has been made, discard all sixes. Okay. Zinch's meddling. In this combat, once the destiny roll has been made, if the available destiny dice add up to nine, discard them all. Well, that's quite fun and thematic. Um, yeah, just take away, taking away some options, taking away some resources. Nurgle's generosity. I guess we're getting one of these for all the ruinous powers. Nurgle's generosity. In this combat, if an explorer begins their activation adjacent to one or more hostiles, roll the blackstone dice. On a 15 plus, that explorer suffers one wound. Seems to be a lot of uh, cards, or maybe not a lot, but several cards that are just applying wounds. Just applying some wounds. So people are going to be spending more time doing the recuperate action. Um, again, it's possibly more likely just going to extend combat more so than than uh, have a significant impact on your strategies. Bleeding out. Treat the recuperate 1 plus action as a recuperate 4 plus action in this combat. That's quite interesting. That's something that's going to be adding a little bit of tension. It's potentially something that uh, you might want to consider doing in your games all the time just to make it um, so it's not quite so easy to recover your wounds and there's a little bit more tension in your combats. Corn's Bloodlust. Roll the Blackstone dice each time a hostile or explorer suffers one wound during an attack in this combat. On a 15 plus, that hostile or explorer suffers another wound. Okay, well that's quite thematic, but again, just adding a lot more dice rolling to your game. I mean, every, every time that you suffer a wound or they suffer a wound, roll the dice. I'm not sure this game needed a lot more dice rolling added to it. A cruel twist. In this combat, change the value of any destiny dice placed in the available destiny dice space of the precipice board to one. These are not discarded. In this combat, change the value of any destiny dice placed in the available destiny dice space of the precipice board to one. These are ah okay. So no matter what you roll, um, once you've removed your doubles and things like that, all the rest just get set to one. So you only have ones. Well, that's okay. Just use them all for your movement, and then hope you get some good rolls on your actual activation dice. 
Interesting times. Subtract five from event rolls to a minimum of one. Yeah, that's just increasing the chance of fun events happening. Destiny thwarted. In this combat, all destiny dice are discarded. So you just don't have destiny dice for this particular. There's quite a few cards that are just taking away destiny dice. I guess they've decided that the uh, potential of extra f five extra actions is, is a problem. Low lighting. In this combat, add one to the cost of all weapon actions that target the hostile at range two or more to a maximum cost of six plus. For example, the cost of a four plus weapon action would be increased to five plus. That's quite interesting. That's quite a good thing, I think. A lot of the ranged weapon attacks are very powerful. Uh, and it is an opportunity to reduce the amount of firepower you can bring to bear on big targets and things like that. So I'm okay with that one. Horrifying regeneration. Remove one wound counter from each hostile after the destiny phase in this combat. Okay. So one wound from each hostile after the destiny phase. So again, it's just encouraging you to focus on taking down one enemy at a time. Which is fair enough. Um, again, not sure how much of an impact that's going to have. Each explorer suffers one wound. If this wound... Oh, if this would take an explorer out of action, instead that explorer does not suffer one wound. Okay, so this was one that they teased online before the pack was available for sale. And I said at the time that I wasn't particularly impressed with that as, as a, a, a twist. It's just, here, have a wound. Or, or don't, if it would kill you. The, the problem with that particular action, uh, that, that particular twist, is that it probably just means that you're going to spend the first few turns, or your first few activations, recuperating. And then after that, the battle will continue as normal. Because it's happening once. Um, yeah, so each explorer suffers one wound. It doesn't say that happens every turn, so I'm assuming it just happens once at the start of the combat. And then from that point on, your combat is going to be exactly the same as it always is. Just do a recuperate action, get your wounds back, carry on as normal. It's not really not really changing anything or achieving anything. Frenzied Onslaught. In the combat, re-roll one action dice that resulted in a failure for each hostile attack action if the attacking hostile is adjacent to the target. So, ooh, yeah, there's a lots more dice rolling. Again, if you've got 21, 21 hostiles on the board... The, a, a lot of these twists would be uh, more appealing with less enemies on the board. Combining re-rolls for every enemy at the same time as you're increasing the number of enemies. Bear in mind that you could have potentially 21 Guardsmen and then 14 Cultists and then a whole bunch of something else, Negavolt Cultists or something. You, that's a potential huge amount of re-rolling in any one given combat. Uh, you know, if you've got seven or eight cultists on the board, re-rolling one one action dice that resulted in a failure for each hostile attack action isn't isn't so bad. But they're doing this in association with dramatically increasing the amount of enemies on the board. I'm not sure those two things work well together. Fatal Misstep. Was this expansion a Fatal Misstep? Ha ha ha. I need a better writer. After making the activation roll, one activation dice with a result of one must be discarded in this combat by each explorer. Again, it's just limiting the actions. I think, haven't we already had one that does that? Mm. Or something very similar. Or wasn't it like you only have three dice for, for the combat? Communications error. When an explorer uses an ability on a spacecraft in this combat, roll the Blackstone dice on a 10 plus, that ability has no effect. Well, just don't use your spacecraft abilities in this combat. Save them for a different combat. Well, yeah, that's not really achieving anything, is it? Um, flush them out. Explorers do not receive the benefit of cover in this combat. We've already had that. We're getting duplicate things. Like I said, there's only 34 cards in this deck. I'm sure they could have come up with 34 different rules. Inescapable blows. Treat critical successes as successes in defense rolls for explorers in this combat. Okay, so yeah, you're not able to critically avoid damage. 
catastrophically bad luck. Draw two abominable intellect encounter cards and apply the twists from each. Oh, yeah, okay. Dulled reflexes. Reduce the value of Overwatch dice by two instead of one in this combat. That's quite good. Um, Overwatch is quite powerful in this game and you can use it to good effect setting up firing fire corridors and things like that. So limiting the number of reaction shots you get on Overwatch isn't a bad thing at all. Panicked shots. Treat the aiming 1 plus action as aiming 4 plus in this combat. Again, um, don't really have a problem with that. As, again, aiming is, is a, a good thing to do and is limiting your ability to do that. It's limiting the effectiveness of your ranged attacks, increasing the likelihood of enemies sticking around. Rising Frenzy. When making behavior rolls for hostiles in this combat, add three to the results on the Blackstone dice. Wasn't there another ability that was exactly the same as that, except it was add five to the result? So we have just a slightly inferior version of, of a twist we've already had. That's not very imaginative. Wave after wave, subtract 10 from all reinforcement rolls in this combat to a minimum of one. And again, this is one of those things where if you limit the number of groups you have in a combat, that becomes less effective. It's better to have three small groups of guardsmen on the board than it is to have one large group for events like that, for twists like that. But there we go. That is that. That's all of them. I've obviously been quite negative in this video. I don't like being negative. It's it's not really in my nature to be to whinge too much about things, but I don't think this has been the best release for Blackstone Fortress. I appreciate the fact it exists, and I do believe it would not necessarily have existed if there hadn't been a lot of feedback from players saying that the game is easy. It doesn't feel to me like a product that Games Workshop had initially planned. The reason being is it does feel very much like a patch, and they have created something of a problem going forward if they're going to continue supporting this particular product line because they have chosen to make additional challenge by adding additional enemies additional hostiles more plastic on the board and that means when they release a new expansion they've got two choices they either have to add more miniatures into the expansions which is going to make them much more expensive or they're going to release the expansions as an easy mode and then ask you to purchase more miniatures and maybe purchase another abominable intellect pack that ups the difficulty again. Neither of those options sound good to me. I would much rather see a more robust baked in way of making the game more challenging. This very much feels like a patch which is a response to complaints. And the fact that it exists is a good thing. It means Assuming I'm right, and assuming that this is a response to customer feedback, this shows a genuine commitment from Games Workshop to support this game line, and that is a good thing, and I cannot knock that at all. Furthermore, I am happy that this product exists, because if people haven't been happy with the challenge of the game and they want a way to make it more challenging, they now have that option. And yes, they can purchase more miniatures and use it that way, or they can just add the twists in. And this becomes a tool, it becomes another option that they have as they tweak the game to make the game what they want it to be. And that is good. You can never have too many options. So despite all my negativity, I am glad to see this product exist. I am glad to see it as support for a game that I do love. And even though I didn't purchase additional miniatures and I don't intend to purchase additional miniatures because I do not think that's the right way to expand the game, I am happy to have these cards in my collection because I certainly will be using them as part of my own set of tools that I use to change the way the game plays and to change the challenge, the difficulty level. I'm simply going to continue using the original encounter cards, the ones that came with the expansions, and then I will also draw one of these abominable intellect cards and apply the twist. So 
that's all I'm going to be using these cards for is like an additional twist in each combat. And that's because I also do other things to make the game more challenging anyway. Or there are other things that I can do to make the game more challenging when I'm feeling in the mood for that. So, and maybe in another video I'll talk through all my various different house rules and things that I do to make the game run a little bit smoother and a little bit more in the style that I would like it to be in. But that's it. That's, I guess, all I've got to say. I am i can't say that I'm delighted with the product, but I am very happy that the product exists. I'm very happy that people have these options now. I'm very happy that there are more tools available for people to customize their game experience, even though this definitely feels like a patch rather than a full solution. And I do hope that going forwards, I do hope that Games Workshop are going to continue supporting Blackstone Fortress, and I do hope that they are going to find a more robust solution to making the game a consistent challenge but that is it um, i'm sorry if i've gone on quite a lot in this video but i do love talking about blackstone fortress hopefully you have enjoyed what i've had to say if you have please consider pressing that like button and if you don't subscribe to the channel please consider doing that as well because i'm always here gabbling on mondays wednesdays fridays every week and sometimes bonus content at weekends that's it for now. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.